All right, I want to say good morning to those out there who are listening from computer. Um, this is the Lord's Day, and we're thankful for it. We will be studying Isaiah 23, hopefully, eight, verses 8 through 18, but there's a lot of pretext to be, going, to be going over from chapter 7 to chapter 23. Um, we do have prayer requests this morning. We'll be going over those as we go to the Lord, thanking Him for this day and for this time. Let's go to in prayer to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this beautiful day you have given us today. And I thank you, Father, for the privilege of teaching your word. Please help me, Father, to remember always it is a privilege. There is nothing about me, Father, except for your choice to give me the gift of teaching. Please protect your word. Please protect your Holy Spirit. Please protect your name, Father, Jesus Christ the Lord, as I teach that I make no mistakes, that I don't sin against your word or you, Father, by teaching things that are of the world or of man, that I only teach correctly, rightly, Father. And Father, I ask you to please help Linda, her wrists, her mom with the pneumonia, and Jim, for he is struggling much, Father, ever since and before, Father, the things that he had, was going through and the consequences of it, even to this day, Father. And Father, please help Phyllis. She is becoming very discouraged. And it is very understandable, Father. Please help Norma to continue to be strong for her and with her, and to con continue to pour out compassion on her, Father. And Father, again, I thank you Please open our hearts and our minds that we will hear, <clears throat> see, and understand your word, to perceive your ways and your deeds, your actions, Father, in our lives and in this world, Father, to know and understand and always remember that you are in control. No matter what the devil throws at us, no matter what the world throws at us, Father, and the evils that we see, please help us to always remember your righteousness abounds and that you dwell within us. In Jesus Christ's name I cry. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Last week was chapter 7. Does anybody remember what we went over in chapter 7? What the bulk of the meaning of it was that we studied? That was the last part. We really didn't get to that because we teach that is taught and preached so much every Christmas. About the two kings. Yes. King David. Yeah, King David. 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 King, 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 King Resident King Pika. King Ahaz. Was King Ahaz good king, bad king? Bad king. Bad king, correct. Okay. So if King Ahaz was a bad king, he was against God. He was anti <coughs> Christ would be nowadays, then he was anti the law, he was anti the Lord, he was anti Moses, he was anti the prophets. Okay? So, yes. <clears throat> so the Lord gave Isaiah this prophecy to Ahaz to show him that he is in control. Just like our prayer is, and what we need to understand in this world always, that the Lord is in control. His righteousness will be fulfilled. No matter what we see around this world. No matter what we see in our political leaders. Okay? Now we have scripture going through all these chapters before we get to 23 that the leaders are also warned against. They will be punished and destroyed. Well, leaders in this time, all over this earth, not just in this nation, will be judged and punished if they do not come to the Lord. This is our belief. This is what we know that is true. For we believe what we believe because we know that we know that we know it is true, as Adrian Rogers used to say. Amen. All right? Now, King Ahab. 
Ahaz was told that Pekah and Rezin were going to be destroyed. And he said, don't worry. You just need to believe what I tell you. And what did we go over last week about the belief? He needed to believe like whom? Abraham. Abraham. Abraham was found righteous because he believed God. Ahaz didn't. Okay? Ahaz worshipped other gods. He sacrificed his children to false gods and so on. All right? So, God goes and gives him the warning about Pekah and Rezin. Who was Rezin? King. King of Aram, basically. Syria, capital Damascus. Pekah was the northern kingdom, Samaria, capital of the northern kingdom. Now, he, then he goes into and promising Israel, Israel, the whole nation, but even the whole earth, a savior will come, and that is Emmanuel. All right, <clears throat> chapter seven, done. Chapter eight. Rezin and Pekah are destroyed. The, it is fulfilled. Okay, they are already dead now. Where do we else do we find? Um, scripture about King Pika and King Rezin, besides the book of Isaiah. We went over this last week for those who are you were here. Lynn, you've gone it over a couple times since you studied the lesson last week and learning the way. You'll find a little about Pika in. Second Chronicles, but you will mainly find it in Second Kings, because the Chronicles is written about whom? The kings of Judah. Remember, the capital of Jerusalem is attached to Judah. The kings are written about all the kings, Southern Kingdom and Northern Kingdom. Okay, now. So, let me see, and then, very important in chapter 8, along with chapter 15 in Jeremiah, and you've heard me say this many times, 15, 19 through 21, do not let the world influence you, Jeremiah, you influence the world, or I will take your work from you. <clears throat> Isaiah, chapter 8, 11 through 13. Basically, he is telling Isaiah the same exact thing. Listen to me closely, Isaiah. You influence the world. Do not let the world influence you. Now, why would God say this? Why would God say that to me right now in this nation? <coughs> yeah, you know, the world wants to influence me. To stop still, me from teaching the word of God. He's still in control. Just well, Jesus, God. Is. He is in control, but what is the world trying to do to me? What is the world trying to do to each one of you? Brainwasher. Yeah, yeah. brainwashers. Yeah. Lie to us. Yeah. Take stop away. us from telling the gospel message. Make us afraid. Mm -hmm. Make us feel like we are not worth anything. Are we worth something? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, why? What are we going over in 1 John? What in 1 John? We are God's children. We have worth. The world does not have worth. Okay? In chapter 23, which is the lesson today, we'll see if we get there. That is the biggest thing. The world is worthless without God. God hates all human greatness and self-pride. Our pride is to be in God alone. Okay? Now, do not be influenced by the world, but influence the world. For the more we influence the world, hopefully, prayerfully, more people will be saved. Every time someone else is saved, what happens? It's written in the New Testament over and over again by Paul. Angels rejoice. Angels rejoice, and what? When they rejoice, what does that do? Who deserves all glory? God. It brings glory to God. 
When people get saved, glory is brought to God. The angels rejoice. People rejoice. What do we do when we see people baptized in the baptismal pool? Rejoice. We rejoice and bring glory to God. God is brought glory. That is why we are created. Not for our greatness, but for the greatness and glory of God. Okay? Now, chapter 9, promised Messiah again. Why is chapter 9? Why should that prick your memories? Because it's in the last... Okay, every Christmas again. The people who walked in darkness have seen it. This is in Andes. <laughs> every Christmas. Yeah, unto to remind us a child us. is born. Thank you. Unto us a child is born. Okay, that's chapter 9. And then, that's the first half of chapter 9. And it gives the name of the names that will be given to Jesus. Wonderful, Counselor, Prince of Peace. Okay? The second half is a warning against Israel. If you do not repent, I am going to destroy you. Okay? So first, they're promised a wonderful Savior. Then they're told, if you don't, you're not going to. When I say you don't, that means what don't they do? If they don't, do what? Come to Jesus. Repent. Repent. What was the promise for Solomon if he prayed? If my people turn from their wicked ways. That's repent. Mm -hmm. Well, that prayer didn't start with Solomon. That prayer was also given to Moses on the mountain. Mm -hmm. Then God told Solomon. But it was given to Moses on the mountain way, way before Solomon was ever born. If my people will repent, return from their wicked ways. There was no temple, there was no tabernacle at the time that was given. The whole thing is repent and believe. Because if you don't believe, you're not going to repent, right? Okay, so there's a warning against Israel. If they do not repent, they will not receive him. Chapter 10, continued warning is against Israel. This time, it's the leaders, it's the princes, it's the priests, it's the prophets who are leading Israel down a path to destruction. So warnings against. Then he goes into warnings against Assyria. Because they think by their own power they are destroying Israel. They are destroying <coughs> Syria, which is Aram, Damascus. By their own power, they destroyed Haran. They destroyed the other parts of Judah. They try to come in and destroy Jerusalem, which is further on, but God gives a prophecy saying it will not happen. They will all die, and he will never allow them into Jerusalem, which he already did with King Ahaz for Pekah and Rezin. He did not allow them into Jerusalem. He's not going to let Assyria in there either. Okay, chapter 11. <clears throat> Promise of Messiah again. End times prophecy and a holy highway. Now this prophecy is against Egypt. Okay? But there will come a time when Egypt will become an ally of Israel. There will be five cities in the nation of Egypt that will be set up for the Lord. There will be an altar outside the property lines of Egypt for the Lord. And the people of Egypt will speak the same language as the people of Israel. 
Chapter 12 is a song of praise to the Lord. Chapter 13, now we get into the warnings against Babylon. Now Israel doesn't even know who Babylon is at this time. Okay? They know who Assyria is. But there's prophecy here that Assyria <coughs> is going to attack Babylon. Well, how's that going to happen? That Babylon isn't even raised up yet. Well, Assyria attacks Babylon when they are still strong. Assyria is strong. They take people from Babylon and put them into the land of Israel, the northern kingdom. You will find this in 2 Kings when you read about King Rezin and King Pekah. Assyria puts people from Babylon into the places where the Israelites lived. This is way before Babylon ever becomes powerful. A hundred, around a hundred, or maybe a little more than a hundred years. Okay? Then Babylon turns the tables on Assyria. But there's already people from Babylon living in the northern kingdom, we find in 2 Kings. Then God, like I said, starts <coughs> warning against Babylon. Because what's going to happen with Babylon? They're going to fall into the same trap that Syria fell into, the northern kingdom of Israel fell into, that Assyria fell into. Pride. <clears throat> All right, chapter 14. Chapter 14 and chapter 24 of Ezekiel are very similar chapters. What do you, what triggers your mind in chapter 14 of Isaiah? or chapter 24 of Ezekiel. You've been taught on it. You've been taught both chapters before. Where Lucifer falls? Yes, the devil. Descriptions of the devil and who he is. Why he <coughs> was thrown out of heaven, which the time period of throwing out of heaven is a little obscure because we know that he was allowed to go, come and go, even after his sin. But they are descriptions of the devil in both those chapters. Chapter 14 in Isaiah, he is described as the king of where? What is he described as in the in book of Ezekiel? Do you remember? King of Tyre. But in Isaiah, he is described as the king of Babylon. Okay? <clears throat> Babylon and Tyre are very similar to each other, very full of pride, puffed up, beautiful cities. The people of those cities thought they were the smartest, they were the most beautiful, they were the best of all. <clears throat> Does that sound like what we've been described as so many times? You know, every time I heard President Trump say these things, you know, I would pray for him to realize it is by God's power. It is by God's mercy, by God's grace. It is not the people of the United States who make us great. It is God who makes us great because he's the one that dwells within us. That definitely has to come to God so he will know and understand and live like that. The others, you know, we don't even know if they know the Lord whatsoever because there's so much rotten fruit that we see. But this nation is not good because it is good. This nation is, has been good, good deeds, good, great even militarily and whatever, <clears throat> intellectually because of God's grace and mercy, not by any human. Okay? So the warning against Babylon, that's the evil one. But it's also against Babylon. It's both. It's a dual purpose prophecy. One is the revelation of who the devil is. One is a prophecy that, and it parallels a human being with the devil because of the pride. All right? Chapter 14 and Ezekiel 24. Chapter 15, continued warnings. And that's back to Assyria. 
chapter 16, 18, 17, 19, 20, and 21. Okay? All warnings against nations. There's, they're against Ethiopia, against Moab, against Edom, against um, Philistia. Um, what is Philistia? Now that I said it, what is it? What is Philistia? Where is it? Johnny? You know it. Go ahead and say it. You were reading them off to yourself. If Philistia, who lived in Philistia? The Philistines. So where is that property? You've been taught many times. Who fought the Philistines? David. Who stuck? How did David come about fighting the Philistines? Goliath. Well, Sam. King Saul was fighting the Philistines. <coughs> Saul kept coming. I mean, Goliath kept coming out, and Saul was afraid. Saul would not go out. David killed Goliath. Right. The Philistines are on the coast of the Mediterranean. And then Israel is outside, inland from that coast of where the Phil Philistines were. Okay? Gaza, Ekron, Ashdod, those cities all belong to the Philistines. Is there a Gaza now? Yes. Is there an Ashdod now? Yes. Is there an Ekron now? Yes. Those cities still exist. Because they were Phoenicians or they were seafarers, right? All Phoenicians up and down that coast. Lebanon down to the Philist through the Philistines. Do they, are they called Philistines now? No. The Romans came in and wanted to insult Israel as much as they could. And so they named the peoples, even the whole land, took the name Israel away from them and named the whole land Palestine which is very similar to Philistine, okay? Now, chapter 22, Jerusalem's coming destruction. Why would Jerusalem have a destruction warning? Sin. That is, they would not repent, okay? Leader. What causes a nation's destruction? Yeah, turning from God. Sin. What did Jesus say the world's sin is? Disobedience. Pride. 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 No. no, it is pride, but that's not the world's sin. That's not what the world is going to be destroyed from. Turning your back on God? Rebellion. Idolatry. What sin is what sin is the only sin that you cannot be forgiven from? Blaspheming the Holy Spirit. How do you do that? Not believing. Not believing the gospel message, because the Holy Spirit is the one who opens the minds of people to the gospel message. Jesus said, "The world's sin is unbelief in me." That is what Jesus said. Okay? So the nations, all nations' destruction, the world's sin is going to be the unbelief in Jesus Christ. Remember, these are not just warnings for the time of Isaiah's life, but there are further and end time prophecies coming up. Okay? Chapter 2 in Isaiah has end times prophecy. Now, what is the root of sin? That's not unbelief in Jesus. No. The root of sin. What was the root of sin for Satan? Pride. Where do I even have that? Pride. See, now your pride word is coming up. What did Satan do with Eve? Took 
What did he say to her? Oh, he deceived her. He, <coughs> he deceived her, but he told her she could be like God. He like deceived God. her, but that's he tempted her. And what does that do? Makes you feel proud. He deceived her, but that is not Eve's sin, being deceived. He tempted her, and she succumbed to that. But what was her sin? Believing to be what? what was the root? One would be like, like God. God. She said it three times. <laughs> yes, yes. Pride welled up in her. He said, you will surely not die. But you will be like God. You'll know as much as God does. And she's like, oh. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so she took a bite of the apple. Got it? What was Satan's root? Pride. So what now is Eve's root? Pride. The root of sin is pride in the human heart. Okay? That's why the human heart is deceitful and full of wickedness. All right? Because we don't want to be told we're the made thing. Satan didn't want to be told I'm the thing that is made. He is the most beautiful creature ever created. Looked at himself, I'm the most beautiful there is. I don't want to be told that he over there on the throne made me. I'm going to sit in this car seat, but inside I'm standing up. You're going to hear that in a sermon today. That's, you see, understand? You see, and understand? That is the evil way. I'm glad I'm amazed. And he wants to take, and he wants to take us out. He wants us to be full of pride so we will rebel against God. That's what it all comes down to. What comes before fall? It's in the Proverbs. Pride. The Holy Spirit, actually. Yeah. So what happened? What happened with the evil one? And the angels? And man? That's why we call it the fall of man. Okay, the angels and the devil fell. <coughs> Why does God give these prophecies? The warnings are prophecies. So it can be better. Well, so that we can stay on path. So they can repent. That is the best answer. For all believers, then Patty's answer works. <clears throat> okay? The main thing is, why did Jonah go to Nineveh? So they would repent. God always warns first is the real answer I want. It's in Isaiah, which we've not gotten to yet. God always warns first before he destroys. He does not just go and destroy. He always warns first. Gives you a chance. Okay, yeah. So... And the answer is given also by Isaiah. And what the verse says is, So you evil people cannot say when you stand before me, you never told me. Mm -hmm. Alright? Mm -hmm. Warn first. Now, Chapter 23. Here. And again, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. I have to think of what it is. <clears throat> now we are in 23. And remember in Ezekiel 24, the devil is symbolized as the king of Tyre, okay? Well, in Isaiah 23, not 24, but Isaiah 23, we are king of Tyre, okay? The king of Sidon, the nation of Sidon, the nation of Tyre, all right? We're going to start there. Verse 8, 
Who has brought this disaster on Tyre? The great creator of kingdoms. Her traders were all princes, her merchants were nobles. The Lord of heaven's armies has done it to destroy your pride and bring low all earth's nobility. Come, people of Tarshish, sweep over the land like the flooding Nile, for Tyre is defenseless. The Lord held out his hand over the sea and shook the kingdoms of the earth. He has spoken out against Phoenicia, ordering that her fortresses be destroyed. He says, never again will you rejoice, O daughter of Sidon, for you have been crushed. Even if you flee to Cyprus, you will find no rest. Look at the land of Babylonia. The people of that land are gone. The Assyrians have handed Babylon over to the wild animals of the desert. They have built siege ramps against its walls, torn down its palaces, and turned it to a heap of rubble. Wail, O sheep of Tarshish, for your harbor is destroyed. For 70 years, the lengths of a king's life Tyre will be forgotten, but then the city will come back to life as in a song about the prostitutes. Take a harp and walk the streets, you forgotten harlot. Make sweet melody and sing your song so you will be remembered again. Yes, after 70 years, the Lord will revive Tyre, but she will be no different than she was before. She will again be a prostitute to all kingdoms around the world. But in the end, her profits will be given to the Lord. Her wealth will not be hoarded, but will provide good food and fine clothing for the Lord's priests. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Page, verse 8. Why does Isaiah refer, refer to Tyre as this evil thing? Who has brought this disaster on Tyre, that great creator of kingdoms? Kings. What did Tyre do? They had taken over a lot of <clears throat> the, I mean, colonized, if you will. There. They colonized other places. Tarshish, as far as we know, is a colony of Tyre. Where is Tarshish? Spain. It is a portion of Spain. Okay. They were a colonizer. So when they were a colonizer, who what were they colonizing besides people? Religion. What Say it again, Susan. A religion. Yes. What is the religion? <coughs> They're Baal worshippers. They're false gods. They're pagans. Okay, so they were taking paganism to other areas. As far as we know, they also, um, wait a minute, I forget how Cyprus fits in, but it's part. Okay, Tarshish, Sidon. What goes down the coast? We've talked about it already. The Philistines. The Philistines. Okay. Other areas. Where else does Tyre? <coughs> what was Tyre known as? We went through already. Whale, O oh, ships of Tarshish, for your port is destroyed. destroyed. Okay. So it is a major hub. <coughs> What is Tarshish bringing back and forth? Everything. Goods. Good. Good. Okay. Good. Nice. So goods come into Tyre because that is the city that is right on the coast. <clears throat> it's a beautiful city. There have been renderings where, um, oh, what's the name of that? It's like a mythical place. Atlantis. Atlantis. A lot of people think it's true. And it was either Tyre or Tarshish. They can't decide which one it was. Was this place Atlantis? Now there are um, artifacts 
in the Mediterranean in both areas that have, you know, colossus stoneworks and stuff, but they're all under sea now. <clears throat> so, anyway, the pagan, prideful, they believe they're the greatest in all the world. Yes? Aren't the Carthaginians under the, wasn't Carthage one of their colonies too? I don't know, because okay. that's all Greece, so... They were Phoenicians. Carthage is in Greece. Carthage is in North Africa. Carthage was in North Africa. Hmm. I have to study it again. I'm not prepared for that question. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Still thought it was Greece. I'm still thinking it is from my history. Anyway, um, so where is Tyre? Now we know where Tarshish is. Where is Tyre? Coast. Coast of what? Spain. Mediterranean coast. Yes, but where is the land mass now? And I think Greece. Tyre is still a city. Phoenicia. No. What is Phoenicia? Spain. We don't call it Phoenicia anymore. No, Cyprus is out in the sea. It's an island. Sidon and Tyre, I think perhaps are still cities to this day, and they are in a country called, starts with an L. Lebanon. Lebanon. Okay. Now, The Lord of Heaven's armies has done it to destroy your pride and bring low all <coughs> earth's nobility. The Lord does not like man when he raises himself up like God, just as he has already judged Satan because he did the same. He doesn't want man following Satan's temptings. Satan's example, Satan's ruination. For we as humans, which God foreknew was going to happen, of course, still suffer to this day from the prideful sin of Eve. Oh, I can be like God. And it's, believe me, it's not Eve's alone. Every human being has that within them. And we would have been exactly the same had we been the first two people on earth, me and whatever woman. It would have been the same. The woman would have sinned and I would have been stupid and said, oh, good, here we go. You know, it's, it's just how it is. <laughs> See, you know, I've heard some preachers, I'll punch at him right in the nose when I meet him. It's like, no, he won't. <clears throat> they are both in the presence of the Lord, nobody's going to be punching or blaming or anything for sin. Yes. Every man is guilty for their own sin. Yes. No one is more guilty of sin once we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are redeemed by the blood only by faith. Yes. None of us are better now, there might be more rewards for us by the obedience of us during this life. But, because of faith, God loves us all identical. Okay? For non-faith, everyone will go into that judgment that is destruction. Now, <clears throat> Uh, did I answer nine for you? For the Lord, um, there was a rhetorical question, basically, is eight, okay? That is also a rhetorical question. Because the Lord already planned on giving the answer. Okay, the people are eleven. Says, Who is destroyed? Why are we, you know, going through all this? Is our false God doing this to us? So the, Isaiah gives them a rhetorical question. It's like, no. It is the God of all universe. The God who created you who did this. There's only one God. Verse 10. Come, people of Tarshish. 
sweep over the land like the flooding Nile, for Tyre is defenseless. Now, <clears throat> this is and can be a very confusing, because I've read this many times, gone over it many times, and, thought, and it, this time, because I really studied it, it is more confusing. Now, your books may explain, like the teacher book does explain their view of it, and I agree with it partially. Um, what does the Nile River do when it floods its banks? It fertilizes the fields. Yeah. And where is Egypt? What is Egypt? Desert. Desert. So it gives water. Yeah, so they need that for their food. Life giving water. Okay? So now God says, sweep over your mother, Tarshish. That's why I think Tarshish is a colony of time. Got it? Sweep over your mother. Now, like the Nile River. So in the book it said they thought that. Tyre would go in because there's no more defenses. Tyre would go in and plunder. I mean, Tarshish would go in and plunder Tyre. Well, the nation has already been destroyed, the city. Um, but if Tarshish was a colony of Tyre, it would have also been under Tyre's rule. Okay? And whatever their goods that were coming into the nation could only be ruled by what Tyre allo allowed them to go. So now, all the goods that are coming in from Tarshish, where all their traders are, you know, whatever would be coming in, foods, clothing, whatever, could go in through the land of <coughs> Lebanon, throughout Israel, through Syria, and whatever, and help feed other peoples, not by just what Tyre said could be done. If the Nile blesses the land, the actual earth, so the people of Tarshish could actually bless the land with the goods. Got it? That makes much more sense to me in the context of what we have. I'm not saying that is exactly right. I'm saying that is what we see in the context. I always have to keep whatever God gives to us in context. All right? Now, let's go on to verse 11. Um, the Lord held out his hand over the sea and shook the kingdoms of the earth. He has spoken out against Phoenicia, ordering that her fortresses be destroyed. Now, Phoenicia, remember, goes down Lebanon into Israel. That is, Phoenicia was named Phoenicia way before what? What happened to the land of Canaan? By the Israelites. It was known, the land was known as the Phoenician coast, Phoenicia, coming down. Israel was went in and was promised what? The land from the bottom. Where what's the bottom of Israel? Basically the Dead Sea. Going all the way up to the land of Lebanon. And the Tyre and Sidon are in that, okay? They were given those lands, and they still don't rule them now. They did for a little while. A little bit during King Solomon's time. <clears throat> Even Damascus was under King Solomon's rule. But because of sin, God took it right back away from them. And that was his warning to Moses. I will give you the land, but I will also take it back from you. <clears throat> All right, verses ordering that her fortresses be destroyed. Again, they're being destroyed because of pride. Um, he says, never again will you rejoice, O daughter of Sidon. So if Tyre is the daughter of Sidon, who was the founding nation? Was it Sidon or Tyre? Sidon is the first, okay? Tyre was brought up because of whoever founded Sidon, all right? <clears throat> For you have been crushed. Even if you flee to Cyprus, where is Cyprus? Mediterranean. West, yes. out in the Mediterranean. 
It's a little <laughs> island. Who do we know from Cyprus? John. We know somebody personally from Cyprus. Eliseo. He's from Cyprus. <laughs> yeah, they moved. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, about the time y'all joined, they were in the process of moving. <clears throat> All right. So look at the land of Babylonia. The people of that land are gone. The Assyrians have handed Babylon over to the wild animals. Now, and the, remember I said earlier, Second Kings, you will find out <coughs> about people being sent to northern Israel by King Pika and <coughs> King Rezin. Mm -hmm. Here is more evidence. Assyria did not destroy Babylon after Babylon was the greatest kingdom on earth. Who destroyed Babylon? Who sent the Israelites back to Jerusalem to build the t temple? Um, Cyrus. King Cyrus. So the Persians destroyed Babylon. <clears throat> the Persians and the Medes destroyed Babylon. This is a further documentation. This is a prophecy that the Assyrians will send Babylonians to Israel. Babylon had to be rebuilt to become the greatest kingdom on earth, okay? So this is before that 70 years that we're going to be reading about in just a minute. <clears throat> the Assyrians have handed Babylon over to wild animals. Animals, animals of the desert. <laughs> they built siege ramps against its walls. You know what a siege ramp is? How they did it? There's a rock in it or something. Yeah, they did it to Jerusalem. Nebuchadnezzar did it to Jerusalem. They would bring dirt, dirt, pile it up, pile it up, pile it up, like this. Then they just walk right on up and go into the city. So, of course, there were people at the top of the walls throwing rocks and whatever and spears and arrows, but they would just build earthen roads right up against the walls. They did it at Masada too. And come in, yeah. So, verse 14, Whale or ships of Tarshish. Now this is how the chapter started, okay? Said, we O ships of Tarshish. But one of the things is, you need to mourn because your people have been destroyed. <laughs> You're no longer going to get all this money for your products. Your products, you know, you need to just take out and give, okay? You're not going to be that wealthy uh, merchant people anymore. For 70 years, now, where do we know the 70 years from? Where were, who was the prophecy given to? That which we know, first, it was given to Isaiah, because we have it right here. But what was Jeremiah told about Jerusalem? When Nebuchadnezzar took him. For 70 years, the people of Judah and Jerusalem will be in Babylon. Then King Cyrus will come and let them go. Okay? Isaiah was told this about also the area of Lebanon, Tyre, Sidon, and plus other cities. Okay? For 70 years, they will be under King Nebuchadnezzar's rule as slaves and prisoners. Not just King Nebuchadnezzar, because, you know, from what we have is King Nebuchadnezzar came to know the Lord. But his sons, okay, were just as evil like King Ahaz and King Manasseh, Hezekiah's son. Evil, wicked men. But for the 70 years... Then it goes on to say that then Lebanon will be let go or Tyre and Sidon. But what's going to happen? They're going to be exactly like they were before I ever destroyed them. Their hearts will not turn until the end of time. Now I did hear a 
that she was a missionary. She was from Lebanon. Uh, must have been three or four years ago. This is a scripture which she was pointing to. That one day, Lebanon will turn back to the Lord. Because there was a long period of time, Lebanon had many Christians in it. That was up until the 70s. The Christians, Catholics, started being persecuted to the point where there are almost no Christians in the land of Lebanon now. Same as Syria. Same as Iraq. Same as Turkey. Same, all these nations. You know, the ISIS destroyed some of the <coughs> oldest church buildings on this earth. And then Trump went in and destroyed them. But these church buildings were almost 2,000 years old. Who would those church buildings have been built by? Disciples of the apostles. Paul. Did Paul travel? Paul even traveled to where? Tarshish. Churches were planted and built. Churches were planted and built. But like the first three chapters of Revelation, if you do not stay strong in the Lord, what's going to happen to the church? The candlestick will be taken away. It means the light in the church, the truth, so that it'll just be like any, any other false teaching. Thank you. Next time, chapter 25. Thank you all. Love you. Bye. Thank you.